Good morning. Thank you all for being here, and thank you to TEDx Charlottesville for having me. In 1996, the greatest joy of my life entered the world, my son, Sam. Less than two years later, I was faced with something I couldn't possibly have imagined, finding the cause, treatment, and cure for a fatal rapid aging disease called progeria. Children with progeria die of heart attacks and strokes at an average age of 13 years. The heart disease is a form of premature atherosclerosis. And this kind of atherosclerosis usually affects millions of people, but in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Progeria is incredibly rare, affecting only one in every 18 million people. There was no known cause, there was no treatment, and essentially there was absolutely nowhere to turn. So what do you do when there's nowhere to turn? Well, you drive straight ahead. My husband and I set out to tackle, to beat progeria. Now, setting out to tackle a rare disease, one of the rarest on Earth, may seem like an impossible task. But for me, after the initial shell shock, it, it didn't seem impossible at all. Impossible wasn't in my, voc my vocabulary. All I saw was possible. I saw a daunting sea of endless possibilities. Now, 10 years or more have passed, and we've discovered the cause of progeria, and we have several potential treatments. Now, in the scientific and medical communities, this is lightning speed. But of course, as a parent, it feels like an eternity. We're not nearly there yet. We have more treatments to discover and to test, and of course, we have the cure to get to. But we have finally started our journey towards that cure. Now, I didn't see tackling progeria as impossible, because I don't really believe in the concept of impossible. So today, what I'd like to do is share with you one version of a secret sauce for making anything possible. The ingredients I'll talk about are distilled from my past experiences with fighting progeria. And I hope they'll help you as well. But first, what I'd, what I'd like to, to ask you to do is think of something meaningful to you, something that seems like it might be impossible. And as we talk, as we go through the ingredients that I'll set up with you, perhaps think about what your secret sauce would be for achieving your seemingly impossible task. It's going to be a lot of work, more than you could probably possibly imagine. But then again, in life, anything worthwhile is worth striving for. I believe in understanding my enemy, progeria, as best I can as I am conquering it. I can only really form my best game plan if I'm able to break things down into digestible pieces. Now, you heard that we made a documentary with HBO, my family did, and others. And I'd like to show you a clip from that film where my son Sam is actually speaking to this theme. He's talking about progeria and his concept of progeria before we understood the cause and then afterwards. I feel like now progeria is more known. I know more about it genetically. So it's less of an embodiment now. 
It used to be like this thing that prevents me from doing all this stuff that causes other kids to die, that causes everybody to be stressed. And now it's, um, you know, a protein that is abnormal that weakens the structure of cells. So. And it takes a burden off of me because now I don't have to think about progeria as an entity. He always puts things a lot better than I ever can. So now we know the cause of progeria, and we find that it's caused by a protein that we call progerin, and progerin is um, building up all the time at very high levels in children with progeria and affecting uh, most of the cells of the body, and that's what causes disease. So what did we do? Well, we had to break it down. We had to understand how progerin was made in order to first try to think about how to tackle it. So what I'm showing you next, almost next, <laughs> whoops, is, is a pathway. And it's a pathway, and at the bottom you'll see progerin, and the top you'll see, you know, and throughout you'll see lots of different things. But I, I, it's just to demonstrate a pathway, and what I'd like you to focus on is that big red portion in the middle that says treatment number one. Because by recognizing the pathway, um, breaking down the pathway towards making progerin, we were able to identify a vulnerable spot, a spot that we thought we might be able to block in order to prevent or to cripple progerin from being made. And that was, in essence, our first treatment for children with progeria. So progeria, my enemy, seemed very powerful and daunting at first glance. But as we were able to break things down and understand how it worked, and continue to do so, it becomes much more vulnerable, and a cure seems much more within reach. In science, as with many things, there are thousands and thousands of pieces of information. And we take those pieces of information and we try to make a story out of them. We try to gain clarity from them, to understand the disease better in our search for treatments and cure. And along the way, there will be successes, and there will most assuredly also be failures. And I believe that it is just as important to understand your failures, to understand the information that you can gain from your failures, as it is to understand your successes. If you become married to a theory of how things work or tied so tightly to the promise or the hope of a treatment that you fail to see its flaws, then you will likely end up going down a failing pathway for a very long time. And children with progeria can't afford that kind of time and those kinds of mistakes. When I sit with families and talk to them a little bit, about whether or not to join a clinical treatment trial. I, I tell them a few things. We have this potential treatment in the laboratory, in cells in a dish and in mice. We've seen some benefit, and we think this may transfer, we hope it does, um, to a treatment. But a child, your child, is much more complex than cells in a dish or a mouse. And we hope this works to improve progeria. But it may not, and if it doesn't, we need to understand why. We need to do the hard work to understand, to seek the truth of what is going on. And then we need to take that information, what we have learned, and forge ahead. In order to succeed, I have needed to remain laser focused on what matters most. And of course, for me and for everybody who works with me, it's the children. I think about the children every single day. And that keeps me right on track. For me, actually, the most, I think the most effective way to stay laser focused is actually 
collaboration. We are much better working together than we could ever be working alone. I sort of see progeria as a grain of sand, small grain of sand. Why would you study this? It's so rare. Why does it matter in the larger picture? Well, it does, because without grains of sand, we would most certainly not have beaches to walk on. Each is a part of the larger picture, for sure, and each has a place, and you never know how important that place is going to be until you dive in, until you do the work, until you get somewhere, until you understand what is going on. The aging field is sort of like the entire beach. There is a tremendous amount of information out there and years and years of work that has been done to understand aging. Now, progeria was always seen and described as a premature aging disease, but in 1998, I was not convinced. I said, well, you know, it gives you the impression of aging maybe in some ways externally, but there's no real biological evidence to back up the story of progeria being equivalent in any way to aging. And we have to discover this, otherwise maybe we'll go down the wrong pathway for years. Then in 2003, we discovered the cause of progeria. And we were able to finally ask those important biological questions. Is there a link? Well, it turns out that there is. Progerin is made at a lower level in all of us, and it builds up with age. So finally, we have something real. We have a way to understand aging better. We have now just informed the aging field in a way we couldn't have imagined, and also the field of progeria. So it's cyclical. They're helping each other. Pro children with progeria are helping the aging community, and certainly information out there about aging is helping to cure children with progeria. I am never satisfied with the work that has been done so far. In 2003, I was at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. for an announcement of the progeria gene finding. And this picture um, shows me here with um, Francis Collins, who is now the National Institutes of Health director. And, but at the time, he was also the um, the the, the co-discoverer, the senior scientist responsible for the gene discovery, the cause of progeria. And I remember being there, and it was great, great to be doing it, but really, we were both just thinking, all we talked about was what are the next steps? How do we get to treatment, and how do we get to cure? Now, it's, it's really terrific to be able to um, announce um, interim findings, successes, because what it does is it gets people thinking, people out there thinking maybe I have something to contribute. It brings more people in to help the children. But a gene finding is not a pill, it's not a treatment in and of itself, it's certainly not a cure. It, it just is not enough. We've also identified the first treatment for progeria, and it's great, it does something, it helps a bit. But I think the thing that it does even more importantly is it generates momentum. These findings, these successes, give us momentum in, and, and give us a way to push. It's the pushing, it's the work, it's the obsession with the larger picture and also all of those small, important details. That's what's really going to get us to where we must go. It's never good enough until it's the cure. Now, the last thing I want to tell you about is the most important ingredient of all, because it threads through every one of these other ingredients in a big, big way. And it's love. I, I have met the greatest people, and the greatest people I have ever met 
the most brilliant, the most successful, are at their very best when they are inspired by love. I've seen it in love for each and every child with progeria. I work with great thinkers who have taken huge scientific risks for children that they have never met. And that is because these children are absolutely inspiring. Somehow, they reach into our souls. They reach into everybody's deepest point so that everybody will do their very, very best when they're working to save children with progeria. The motivation for me to achieve the seemingly impossible started when Sam was diagnosed at 21 months of age. Six months later, my sister, my husband, and I started the Progeria Research Foundation to find the cause, treatment, and cure for progeria. Four years after that, we found the cause. Four years after that, we initiated our first clinical treatment trial. I believe that everybody who worked with us, everybody who believed, who donated, who, who helped with their talents, with their time, to achieve a dream that some may have thought impossible, all of these people did it for love. I'd like to show you a trailer from the documentary that we made, because this documentary really springboards, really brings out the fact that love was the driver for everything that has happened, and probably, I'm sure, everything that will happen to save children with progeria. Only if the trailer wants to come up. There we go. I want you to get to know me. This is my life. Progeria is part of it. It's not a major part of it. The worst thing that could happen to you is just to told your son has a condition that there's nothing you can do about. People will say things like, I don't know if I could do this. Yes, you could. My mom will keep working until progeria is cured. The reality of a treatment is here, and that makes everything else seem possible. I didn't put myself in front of you to have you feel bad for me. I put myself in front of you to let you know that you don't need to feel bad for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I hope that this talk has given you some ideas about what your secret sauce might be, your ingredients for achieving what you, what's most important to you in life. For me, it's been the courage to understand my enemy, progeria a commitment to the elusive truth about how this disease works and how we're going to beat it. An ability to remain laser-focused by thinking about the children, the thing that matters most, along with a healthy dose of discontent. And through it all, the core of everything, love. That's my secret sauce for achieving what is most assuredly possible and I hope that you can find yours too. Thank you.